beautiful. This thing is really slow and uh, confusing. Well, you know, I think we should just, you know, get into it. Is this better? I can give you more. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so yeah, I've, I've laid out a bunch of pedals here. Um, I have two of the new Basarik pedals. And um, there's a Dunlop fuzz face, there's a wah for some reason, and I'm running everything through this uh, Strymon Iridium. Because, you know, I'm in my mother's apartment, uh, because I have five kids, and uh, there's no way I can do this at home. And my mother is in Africa, I think, and so... So yeah, that's glorious. Um, I thought we'd just get to it. So this is this is what Basak sounds like through the Strymon Iridium, through the audio interface, and then into the computer and through OBS, which is new to me, and then onto YouTube, and then you know into your Nokia phone where you're watching this thing. Feel free to um, drop them in the chat. Uh, I don't think there's that many of you here yet, and so you know, th I'll definitely read uh, the comments and the chat, and I'll probably get to your question. So this is going to be fine. I have uh, one or two friends who are sort of part-time employees for Fjord Fuzz. And um, they are working at different bars around the city, and they may show up a little later on. Um, so I'll be getting the door and letting them inside, and we'll all have a party. So you know, get get. I don't know what the time is where you are, but if if it's time for beer or time for wine, feel free to join me in this celebration. So yeah. Is V2 the same as V1 with the two buttons pushed in? Uh, no. Uh, the V2 is an entirely new circuit and it actually has very little to do with the 
original version one. Now the version one is very close to the Jim Dunlop uh, Hendrix style first phase. Um, there are some differences to it, um, but mostly what I did was I took what I felt was a pretty decent first phase. Let's hear that, okay? So. Sorry, it's a fly. It's uh, we call it hundedagar in Norway. It's the dog days, and you know, here we are. Um, so you know, I like that, but it's not very useful to everybody. And um, uh, the first edition was trying to do basically the first phase as a sound, but padding it in a way that it would. Um, work well with um, uh, within a modern rig so you know this is a situation where you have um, the fuzz on and then you turn the the wah on and uh, this is what happens and that's un untenable you know you can't have that happening and um, so for the uh, version one, I had a little push button that you could push and it would add a very simplistic uh, gain stage in front of the fuzz that still was able to clean up quite well, um, which isn't something you usually find because, you know, if you put a buffer in between the fuzz phase and the wah, um, you can have it work. It, it sorts out the issue with the uh, oscillation at the heel down position of the wah. However, you lose the ability to clean up your uh, fuzz using the guitar's uh, controls, right? And so I didn't want that. So I devised a sort of input gain stage that changed it. And then in retrospect, I feel like it changed it a bit too much for my taste. But the thing is, um, with, um, with the Basak version 2 set to just... Um, everything at max and output volume at whatever is necessary, you still have this issue. But the thickness control um, is, is here to help you. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. And it's gone. the same thing. Uh, the, the other thing that the um, the first edition of sort of the official um, Basak version one had was um, it had an output uh, fix that would allow you to get it to, 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 to kick your amplifier much harder or um, or simply just like fix your output level and impedance in a way such that it wouldn't um, interfere with uh, uh, with your uh, um, modulation devices following it and this thing has a different type of impedance output and it also has like way more output so right now this thing is set at you know I don't know like nine o'clock and it's uh, <coughs>
think one way to think about it is um, uh, the the old version and the new version uh, are both trying to do the same things, but I'm going about it in, in very different ways. So I brought just the PCB here too, with all the parts connected, and realized that I had to move the camera quite far back to make everything work. So, you know, if my employees show up, we may be able to um, do something with this, but it's it's a tiny little circuit, and um, there's quite a few differences between what Basak is now and what a regular first phase topology is. And one of the main differences is um, Basak does not have what they call an emitter bypass cap. Now, this was an old trick that's also used in the Range Master and uh, that I'm using in Embla and I'm using it in uh, Udin uh, on the octave fuzz. Um, and what it does is it sort of fixes um, whichever transistor you pull this trick on to its um, maximum uh, uh, potential internal gain. And, and that's fine, but the problem with, it, uh, with this application is um, it also makes it so that you have to sort of fix the volume output coming out of the circuit at a lower level than max. And this, I think, um, helps make the output impedance kind of off. And um, so without using that, I'm able to just give you the full signal straight from the collector of Q2, which is the second transistor. And, uh, and I think also something here happens to um, the compression as you do that. So, you know, this is a traditional first phase. To, to get lost in the mix. So
yeah, I think uh, personally to me this has been um, a bit of a chase. Um, like some back back some ten years ago, I would um, um, I used to do a lot of gigging, and uh, I sort of came came up during the era where um, it was um, a customary to have um, have a bunch of pedals on your board. I mean, that's probably still the case for most of you, but uh, more specifically, you would often have like maybe three overdrives, a boost, maybe maybe a fuzz. And what we what you would do is, is you would have your clean tone would be just like a very clean amplifier, maybe like a Fender Twin. And then you would add a, a clean boost to just like get more volume. And then you would have um, maybe a low gain overdrive to get some low gain overdrive. And then you would have another one from some other brand. So maybe you would have, you'd have something like, like I did, I had a, I had a Tube Screamer and a Blues Overdrive, no, what's that called? Blues Driver. And then, you stack them and you'd have like a lead tone kind of, and then maybe you had a fuzz too. Maybe you had like a fuzz factory or a a big muff of some sort, or maybe even um, like I had the uh, Mastotron, I think it's called the Zvex, uh, the sort of woolly mammoth but six knobs. And uh, so you would you would sort of use your feet to step in between um, different dynamic ranges. Uh, for you to exist within as a guitarist and I think you know that's that's a totally valid way to 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 use your um, rig and to design a rig um, and for that purpose I needed something that could take care of like most of my um, more lead based tones and so that sort of led to um, the invention of uh, Embla, an Embla named after my uh, oldest daughter, um, was uh, for many years sort of my my main fuzz pedal, my main drive pedal at all really. It's it was everything that I needed. I could always just bring that, and that was that. But but I also you know I used to play through um, Vox AC thirties and Tiny Towers and Dual Towers and sometimes. I'd have access to like a high watt uh, custom 20 and for those types of sort of lower gain no I mean lower powered um, sort of British amplifiers uh, Ambla is just glorious but for uh, for something that's more distinctly in the sort of realm of Marshalls um, I started feeling like I needed something different and so honestly this process has it started with uh, me discovering how nice the Odin was without the octave function because originally Odin came as a one knob fuzz and it was just the octave fuzz and um, and discovering how beautiful the non octave version of Odin truly was uh, sort of set me down that route that route the route that it put me in the direction that led to this, this thing, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I could probably now use this as my only uh, gain unit uh, in most circumstances, unless I needed something like an, an octave up or a gated fuzz or an um, octave down for that matter, you know, if I needed something different to go along with it for certain sections then I'd, I'd, I'd add that but this this is now my my voice as a guitarist and I think that's really important I mean it is to me anyway <laughs>
please keep them coming. Um, I don't know if this is even working. I mean, this is the first time I ever do something like this. I'm gonna go refill my wine glass, and in the meantime, feel free to post whatever questions you have, and uh, you know, I'll be I'll be back. Give me one second. Okay, I'm back. So, if there are no other questions, um, I'll just, you know, get along with it. Let's talk about the knobs. What do they do? Uh, why are they here? which I will never do and um, you, you can if you want so with everything set to noon I think you should have quite a nice sort of jangly rock and roll type of sound <laughs> He has, he did this beautiful Odin video for me, maybe like, I don't know, six years ago, feels like. It's been a while. Maybe I should send him some more pedals. So we're drinking La Media. Bianchetto. Bianchetto. So the gain knob uh, is not at all like a first basis gain knob. Let me show you. Everyone knows 
so you, you, you change the gain of the first phase using the other guitars for you. So, you know, it makes sense to make the gain knob do that on the pedal, so that's what it does. However, I'm using a different... Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, so, so the gain knob on Basak is doing the exact same thing as um, as your guitar's volume knob, but it's doing it with a different type of taper and a different value to the potentiometer, which yields um, a quite different operation. Um, it's not at all the same, really, if we're being honest. Um, this has a has a hundred k pot, whereas your guitar, such as this one, I think this one has a five hundred k. Your Les Paul might have a two fifty or three hundred k. There are different types. If you have a jazz master, there might be a one meg um, pot in there. And as you know, especially if you come from like the jazz master world, you know that uh, a one meg ohm potentiometer will yield a very br bright and harsh tone and so you can change the entire tonality of the guitar just changing the volume and even tone pots of your guitar so by using a 100k uh, potentiometer at the beginning of this circuit I'm changing the impedance or the sort of overall um, EQ curve to the uh, to, to your signal even before it hits the actual circuit. Now there is a 2.2 mega ohm resistor in parallel with this control, so that does um, potentially decrease some of that effect. But I think it's still in there, and it I mean it sounds uh, decidedly different if you stick in stick a 500k pot in there instead. So I, I stand by that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it it allows for some some really sweet sort of in between sounds. something that I've used quite a few times in many of my pedals because it's my favorite way of actually dealing with uh, EQ on a pedal. I like I like EQ stuff that does very little or uh, entirely too much. So for, for Femmes, there's this notch filter that goes absolutely crazy if you wanted to. But beyond that, I don't have any tone controls except for this uh, thickness control that I sort of learned 
um, by studying the work of uh, John Lyons, who is um, the creator behind the, the basic audio um, pedal company. And uh, what it does is it, uh, it fixes a small capacitor at the input of the circuit. So the smaller the capacitor, the, the less of your base signal actually reaches the circuit or at least the active portion of the circuit and so so as a default setting you have very little and then you can add in uh, a second capacitor and that can be a very large capacitor and and it gets sort of added on top of the, the small capacitor and two capacitors in parallel uh, gets added together that's how that math works so at zero, I think you have, in this one, I think I landed on a one nanofarad. I may have landed on a 10 nanofarad. I'm not quite sure. Five nanofarad is what's in a treble booster. That's why it's a treble booster. Uh, but the big one is 10 microfarad. So that's like a, a thousand times bigger. And so you can go from what is essentially entirely too much, uh, with it at full tilt. That's all there is to it. There's nothing going on on the inside, uh, not in any of my current uh, pedals in the lineup. I, I sort of felt like um, you shouldn't have to undo the back lid to get to the important controls, so I just ditched everything that was in them. I'm going to try and stay on that um, path for as long as I can. Now. You might ask yourself, why is there two Basak 2s on my table? Well, uh, this is a thing that I haven't revealed yet. But as I was working on the, um, on the circuit itself, I discovered that if you added uh, clipping diodes to the output section of the pedal, you could get just a glorious, super heavily compressed, like way more compressed than the, the, the original first phase and uh, I liked it but I didn't feel like I needed to keep it in it wasn't what I was looking for but I decided to just leave the pads on the board so there's a little sort of DIY project for you here and so I preloaded one of these with, uh, with diodes um, added and you know you can use any diodes you want or none at all and I would suggest none at all because I think it works the best without them. But for the more experimental people among you, um, this is an option too. So let me show you what I mean. So I'll, I'll, I'll go through the first one and then we'll kick in the second one, switch between them. And I think you can probably hear what's going on. same um, settings so we need to give this way more volume <laughs> Thank you. 
yeah, I mean, um, what's going on here is I've made just a little section here where you're able to, to, to um, mix between maybe, maybe if you want um, um, symmetric clipping or asymmetric clipping or or you could just like add a little capacitor to one of the pads and um, you'd be able to cut off some highs if you wanted it to be a darker more woolly fuzz and um, or you could do either one of those or just one diode or yeah there's a bunch of things you can do to it if you want to and uh, that's not going to void the warranty but I in the sort of manual that you get with the pedal I suggest that you use sort of a longer leg length for these components if you want to actually go ahead and uh, change them so that whomever owns it after you uh, isn't necessarily stuck with uh, your modification but yeah experimentation is always highly encouraged here at Fjord Fuzz headquarters so that's that mm. you see how long have I been going on it must have been almost an hour now and um, let's see how many of how many of the of you are there right now not that many peeping people falling off uh, but that's fine three people watching so any more questions um, otherwise I think I think we might be done here to uh, save this thing you you'll be able to watch it tomorrow and uh, you know tell all your friends and I you know I'd like to thank you for joining me on this um, first ever live stream and uh, you know if this if this thing um, contrary to uh, what I would assume uh, takes off then you could tell people that you were here when there was like two people uh, watching the stream so thank you for that and uh, um, yeah I'll try and do this more often you know so okay thank you good night and goodbye